All right, welcome back. So let's go from proper foundation for releasing the gifts of the Spirit. Now, remember, in everything that we do, there should be a good foundation, right? We should know why we're doing what we're doing. So what are some of the foundations that we can have? The gifts of the Spirit are given to all believers, every man, every woman, everyone. The gift of the Spirit is given to all believers, right? Two, the gifts of the Spirit are a manifestation of the Spirit. Means means what? It's an expression of who He is, right? It's an expression of, of, of the third person of the Trinity. So when you and I are prophesying or get a word of knowledge, it's not an expression of you. It's not because you are you or I are you or me, one of us are a pastor or a healing evangelist. That is why it's happening. No, that is a title. The gifts of the spirit is an expression of who he is. So always remember the glory goes to God. I give a prophetic word. God, thank you for releasing using me as a vessel to bless other people. It's an expression of who the Holy Spirit is. An operation of the gift of the Spirit is the Holy Spirit expressing in himself and Jesus is always glorified. So the Holy Spirit inside us is expressing himself. Remember we talked about those five senses, how the Holy Spirit uses our five senses to minister to us. When the Holy Spirit wants to release something to somebody and he's using you and I as a vessel, it is expressing, he's expressing himself. He's expressing his character, his nature. That he can heal, he can deliver, he can bring, uh, you know, prophetic word, words of knowledge. He's also expressing that I know you, word of knowledge, right? So what is the point here? Jesus is always glorified, not the person. Now, remember this. We respect and honor the pastor, the prophet, the apostle, all of that. We respect and honor them. But we glorify only Jesus. We don't glorify the pastor. We don't glorify the prophet and say, you are the greatest prophet and all of that. It's not required. Because it is the Holy Spirit who is releasing the gift. Now, it's sad to see what's happening in the church where people are, you know, causing so much of a, you know, havoc and making ministry a show, show business. It's sad to see all of that. But you don't get entangled into all of that. There's beauty and simplicity. Everyone say that. There's beauty in simplicity. Just be simple. When we are simple, we don't have to put up a show. God will honor simplicity. Jesus was a simple man. When he ministered, he was a simple man. He didn't put on a crown and go everywhere. He didn't ask people to wash his feet. He washed others' feet. Right? So, when we are ministering to people, be thankful that God is using us. Every time, every Sunday, when I go up to preach, sometimes I still think of it. It's been so many years, but I say, God, you're using me to deliver this message to these people here. And these people are come hungry to hear your word. I don't know what problems they are going through. And maybe know some of them's problems, but I don't know everyone's problem. But Lord, you're using me as a vessel. So let their lives be a blessing. You be glorified in all of this. Right? So now the picture changes. All of a sudden, you're not interested in yourself. You're not interested whether people come and say, praise the Lord, pastor, and all of that. That's all secondary. What is important? Jesus is glorified. Amen? Right? Thirdly, the gifts of the Spirit are given to edify people. What is the meaning of edify? To build up. To strengthen, right? Now, if I am giving a prophetic word, for example, I'm giving a prophetic word to uh, to somebody here, right? Or Vinay. I'm giving a prophetic word, but it's a word of correction also. 
Now, the word of correction can be taken in a wrong way also. Right? So what if Vinay says, no, how do you know? Why should I do what you tell me to do? Now, what's happening? I'm bringing a word of exhortation, but this, but Vinay is saying, no, I don't want to do it. So what is happening is he's bringing a hindrance for God to fulfill what he wants to do in his life. But the moment a prophetic word is, is a correction, but also a, a word of encouragement, right? And he takes it in the right way, then it edifies him. It builds him up. So I say, hey, so Vinay, I, I feel that, you know, this is what is happening in your life. God is telling me to tell you, stop wasting time on watching TV. God is telling me to tell you that same time, spend two hours in, in the word. Now he may get offended or he may say, if I want to be a worship leader, and God is calling me to be a pastor also. I got the prophetic word. I have to start the church. I can't be sitting and watching Netflix the whole day. So I have to do something about it. So cancel that. God's word. Go back to prayer. Go back to and and if and if Vinay takes that and it, he uses it in his life, he's edifying himself. Now, this is just a personal word. Imagine the church, a prophetic word given to the entire church can edify the whole church, right? Fourthly, okay, Vinay doesn't have Netflix, I'm not talking uh, just an example, right? Uh, fourthly, the gifts of the spirit are no indication of spiritual maturity. Now, just because I'm a prophet doesn't mean I'm spiritually mature. There's a difference. Spirituality is your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Maturity is being more Christ-likeness. Remember, God gives us the gift, but it's our responsibility to use it the right way. Right? Now, I can be very spiritual flow in the gifts of the Spirit, like the church in Corinth. They're flowing the gifts of the Spirit. There's word of knowledge, prophecy, healing, miracles. Probably blind men are seeing, lame are walking. All these miracles are happening. But among them, what is happening? I follow Paul. Paul. I follow Apollos. Apollos, no? I follow Peter. He was with Jesus directly. And another person saying, forget you three, I follow Jesus. Now there is division in the church. Were they flowing in the gifts? Yes or no? Was there division? Was there maturity? So very important. Just because I may be flowing the prophetic or the word of knowledge or the healing and miracles and deliverance ministry and all of it doesn't mean that I'm mature. Remember that example I told you about that man who came with sunglasses and jacket and all that? He got offended. He went home. It shows how mature he is. But he's a prophet. He gives prophetic word, healing, all of that. Maturity, like a child, not willing to take correction. Right? So don't look, very important, don't look at people and think, okay, this is, they may be very mature because they're flowing in the gifts. No. God can make a, a boy who is one year in the Lord, one day in the Lord to give a prophetic word. Doesn't mean he's mature. You understand that? Right? So when you are, you know, there's so much available online, be wise, think, ask God for wisdom. God, when I'm watching, you help me to read the right books. Help me to watch the right messages. Help me to discern, understand what is being said. Is it in line with God's word? Is there something wrong here? Right? That's something that we must do. Fifth, the gifts of the Spirit can be manifested anywhere at any time. It's not like Holy Spirit is saying, hey, I want to bring healing. Tell him to come to church. No, you can be in the football field also and pray for healing. It can be manifested anywhere at any time. We are to desire to walk in spiritual gifts while maintaining a walk with love. So we read that in uh, 
uh, 1 Corinthians, right? He says, desire the gifts, yet we have to walk in love. If I give a prophetic word, right, and I don't walk in love, it's of no use. I will not be rewarded anything. Because love is greater than all of that. Okay, we release the gifts through faith. Romans 12 and 6, very common passage. Let's go there. Let's read Romans 12 and verse 6. Everyone with me? Go ahead. Having the gifts, differencing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy according to the proportion of faith. Yeah. So we, re we release, if it is prophecy, oh, he's just giving an example there, if it's prophecy, but we release each gift to the proportion of our faith. The more the faith, the more the gifts are released, greater the miracles. If there is no faith, no gifts are released, no miracles. Right? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, just because I, there's no miracles, God is not there. No. You know, we can have a, you know, a Sunday sermon, worship sermon, pray and close. God is there. Right? But when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, if I want to see a move of the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, I need to walk in faith. I need to release it, right? Then, several gifts can flow in conjunction with one another to accomplish a specific purpose. That means gifts can be interchangeable. Now, when you are giving a prophetic word, now don't worry, is this prophecy a word of knowledge? Don't start your calculations. Or am I using the gift of faith? Forget about all that. Be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit at that moment. Now, the, the Lord can bring a word of knowledge and a prophetic word at the right time, together. Right? So God can reveal something that you're doing and say, give you a prophetic word. Both the gifts use interchangeably. What about three gifts? God can reveal something, give you a prophetic word. You pray for healing and he's healed. Three gifts working together. Now, don't take out a book and start writing prophecy. This many I gave. Word of knowledge, this many I gave. That's a waste of time. Right? Don't have to sit and count. But remember that we, we don't have to be rigid and classify them. Word of knowledge. Just do what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Then what you can do is you can, when you go back to your room or when you go back home, you think about it. So remember last supernatural, uh, supernatural hour, I prayed over somebody who was a pastor. Who is that? Who God gave a prophetic word. Was that you, right? So I went back home and I was, the Holy Spirit was reminding me of that. So I was thinking about it. So God, what, what, what do you, what do I say? What should I, is there anything that I should add to this? Is there something that you want to reveal in this? Right? So I'm not thinking of whether it's prophecy, whether it's word of knowledge, but I'm thinking of, God, how can I minister more and bring a more accurate word? So I'm trying to improve myself by tapping into the Holy Spirit. Right? OK. Nine, then ninth point here, gifts empower ministry offices. So there's the gift of faith or there's a gift of uh, healing and there's a ministry function of healing there's that difference right so all of us can pray for healing but then there is there are some people they, they, they at every moment they pray for healing and people are healed that's the ministry function the office of the healer right now so how do steps to minister in the gifts know what the word says number one eliminate doubt what does the word say? It is the Holy Spirit releasing the gift. So know what the word says. Know that you are a child of God and God is going to release these gifts in you. Be assured. Listen, let me give you an example. If I tell you, go to the supermarket, buy a pound of bread and come. 
and I send you empty pockets. And you say, no, sir said go buy bread. So I go into that soup. You go into that supermarket. Are you going in fear? Are you going in confidence or in fear? Fear. Something is wrong. I should not be doing this. What if they catch me? Something's wrong. But if I give you the money and I say, go buy bread. So what will you do? You'll not stand at the door and be looking everywhere. Should I go in or no? You will go directly. You'll go buy the bread, pay the money and come. Confidence. There's no doubt. The same way you and I are children of God. When we know that, when we are doing our ministry, we're doing it with that confidence. You know what the word says. Two, desire for the manifestations of the gifts. Three, very important, yield to what the spirit is saying or doing. What does the word yield means? Yield means to surrender, to submit to what the word is saying. To surrender and submit to what the Holy Spirit is saying. If the Holy Spirit is telling you to close your phone and read the word, we need to obey that. Now, when I obey that, the Holy Spirit begins to say, okay, I can trust this boy. I can give him more. Now it's small. He's obedient in small things. They're going to be bigger things. I can give him bigger things. I can lead him to bigger, bigger things because he's listening. He's being sensitive to my leading. So when I yield and surrender to the Holy Spirit, I'll begin to open a door for the move of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes many of us, are, you know, many of them have asked me, why is it that I'm not able to flow in the gifts of the Spirit? One reason could be because we are not yielding to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants us to do something, but we're not surrendering. We want to do it our way. And then when it comes to public prayer and public ministry, we want to see healing, deliverance, and miracles. But in our private life, we are not surrendering. That's a challenge, right? So we must learn to yield to what the Spirit is saying. Fourthly, administer the gift properly, meaning just because we have the gift doesn't make doesn't make us greater than the other or doesn't make us put us in a position to ridicule or mock somebody else administer gifts the right way if i'm praying for somebody for healing and this person comes and says i don't know why this sickness is bothering me for the last 10 years i shouldn't be the first person to say you know what how many sins you have done i know all the sins you have done that's why First of all, I don't see you on Sundays in church. You don't come for the prayer. You don't come for healing service. You don't come for fasting and prayer. Worship evening, you don't come. Right? All the time you're at home. You go to work and come. I don't know what you I don't know if you're giving to the Lord. And what are we doing? We're pointing fingers. No, we need to administer the gifts in the right way. God is a God who heals us. Simple. You administer that gift, right? Whatever the gift is. Then how do I tap into these gifts? Very important. We have the gifts. How do I tap into it? Maybe that's a question some of us have, right? How do I, how do I prophesy? How do I get the word of knowledge? How do I get a word of wisdom? How can I pray for healing over people? Just a few points here. Stir up the gifts of God in you. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14. Very powerful passage. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14 go ahead read that do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership mm. do uh, not neglect the gift that was given to you by the laying on of hands remember this long time back uh, a, a wonderful man of god a very prophetic man of god he had come to apc and uh he was praying for all for many youth right and when it came to me I was waiting. I said, God, give me a prophetic word. Right? So he's going around praying for everyone. I remember, I told one of my friends, 
said, you record what he says, because I didn't have a phone. Said, you record what he says. I want to know what it is. So the moment he came and he laid his hand on me, he recorded it. A voice message, right? Record. In the recording, he says, Paul, God is giving you big opportunities ahead. And of course, what everyone prophesy, right? You'll be you'll be preaching, you'll be teaching. Uh, the gift of music is in you. And uh, God is asking you to stir up those gifts and all of it. I used to keep listening to that. Now, it was not like I was listening to that and being happy. There's something that I had to do about it. Right? I had to stir up those gifts inside me. I knew I could sing. I knew I could had some kind of musical talent, but I had to stir it up. If I have to play on the stage in church, I have to be really good. If I have to be able to learn how to preach and teach, I have to be really good at it. So I have to prepare myself. I have to stir up the gifts. Right. So I would listen to that prophetic message. God, one day, Lord, one day, go back to the word, pray. Go back when I'm discouraged, when I feel like quitting, I'll go back, play that audio message. God, one day, one day I'll lead worship, one day I'll preach, Lord, thank you. Put it off, go back to the word. Many times I felt like just going and working, you know, in the previous company, and go back to that message. God, one day it'll happen. Help me to stir up, go back to the word, pray, prepare, practice. Hours and hours of practice and preparation. Right? So we have to stir it up. When you buy a coffee, sometimes they give you coffee without sugar, right? They give you those sugar packets. So you take those sugar packets, you put it in and you drink it. What do you do? Ah. Why? Why do you stir it? It's there, no sugar. You stir it so that it mixes all over. And the taste is good. Same way. Your gifts are there. We have to stir it up. Right? Pray in the spirit. Again, a very important foundation of all the other gifts. Why is it a foundation? Because the gift comes along with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When we pray in the spirit, uh, it's a powerful attack against the enemy. Then, worship, fasting, and building up of faith. Worship is a way of tapping into the gifts of the Spirit, fasting and praying, and then again, walking in faith. What are some of the hindrances to moving in faith? Sorry, moving in the gifts of the Spirit. Number one, lack of proper teaching. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Let's read that. Hosea had a tough time ministering to the people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. Mm. I also will reject you from being priest for me. Yeah. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. The people of Israel during that time, they're destroyed because they don't know what God did. They don't know what God was going to do, what God is capable of doing. They were destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Same thing happened in the book of Numbers. Remember people, the Numbers and uh, Joshua later on, they came. They came out of Egypt. Nobody knew why are they in the desert. I mean, we are in the desert, that's it. They didn't know what God, miracles God did. They didn't have the knowledge of God. And they went into sin. Lack of knowledge is number one reason. Neglect. Okay, I don't have the gift, so forget it. It's better I pray, read, pray before I eat food, go to church on Sunday, do the volunteer work, go back home. That's enough. All these gifts are all big headache. No one. Right? So that's a feeling of neglect. I don't want it. Sometimes a sense of unworthiness. This comes from the devil. The devil will come and say, you can never flow in these gifts at all. Don't even try it. Who will listen to you? You are from the village of North India. You are from a village of South India. 
you don't know english you don't know anything from the word you don't know how to read you you are like this you are like this that is satan's job satan's job is accusing people you are like this you are like this but what is your job ephesians 6 put on the armor of god helmet of salvation breastplate of righteousness and you have to fight so this unworthiness feeling will come you have to fight it say no god can use anybody at any time and any way fear of failure what if i'm ministering and I, there is no prophetic word there's no word of knowledge that's okay that's happened to me many times you know people have come for prayer i pray over them and they're standing and watching they're waiting for a prophetic word a word of knowledge pastor anything came i said no it's not like every time i pray some word of knowledge will come a prophetic word it doesn't and sometimes this can cause fear what if people reject me don't worry about all of that you be faithful in what god is speaking to you what god is ministering to you right then fear of man what will man say and then need for affirmation people should say you know, some things so for example a, a person can come and say you know what you you didn't do this or nobody acknowledged you for the give for the way that you ministered uh, that can cause a fear that can cause damage in your in your what do you call that uh, self-esteem remember as a worship leader after service people used to come up to me and say oh very good worship very nice i saw angels coming up and down uh, all that will be there from the third floor they were coming down to the first floor. really people have come up to say oh, when you started that song brother tell you jesus only i saw directly when you started this song brother, i could you know, the Holy Spirit was everywhere. I felt now what you are listening to all of this and you're saying, Wow, what a worship leader I am. Next week, somebody comes and says, What you are doing? The song that you sang, first of all, it was wrong key, wrong scale, wrong chords, everything was wrong. Now, what happened? God, I'm unworthy to be a worship leader. <laughs> no. Right, so it's not about your self-esteem. You just just do what God is calling you to do, and you learn from your mistakes. Again, releasing prophecy. Few very important points. Prophecy is simply God speaking to man through man. Right. Now, the simple gift of prophecy is given for three main reasons. Let's read that: edification, exhortation, and comfort. Say that: edification, exhortation, and comfort. What is edification? To build each other exhortation to correct and to rebuke and to uh, and and then uh, um, comfort and a prophetic word will bring comfort the moment you listen to a prophetic word and there's unrest there's fear you take that prophetic word and keep it away say god i don't agree to some of this lord you speak to me people have prophesied over me all kinds of things Sometimes there was fear, sometimes I've received it, there was comfort, there was peace. Somebody said, somebody prophesied over me, you will, uh, you will start a church and then the church will not work and then something they prophesied. I took that and threw it in the dustbin because there was no comfort, there was no exhortation, there was no encouragement, it was just some word that was given, random word. All can prophesy. Can you prophesy? Yes or no? There's so much you can prophesy. Now, don't make up your own prophecies. Don't go to YouTube and check what pastors are prophesying and then come and start prophesying here. If you're doing that, please stop it. Why? People may say, good job, good job, but God will say zero out of 100. I don't count this at all. So a prophetic word is directly from God. We can't make it up. Don't make up stuff just to be known. 
everyone with me right don't make up stuff even in the supernatural hour don't make up stuff if you didn't receive a word you didn't receive that's it but if you received give the prophetic word give it in confidence knowing that you're doing it right before god's eyes right we prophesy in part very important first corinthians 39 paul writes and he says we know in part we prophesy in part that means what when god gives a prophetic word it is normally not a whole detailed explanation about your life or about some things that are going to happen he he gives us some things and he, how much we can take we prophesy in part we know in part we prophesy in part so just because we are prophetic in nature doesn't mean we'll know everything about the other person no right all prophecy must be judged the giver of the gift is perfect the holy spirit is perfect jesus is perfect but the vessel through which the holy spirit is using that is you and i are imperfect so then what we do we add say it loud yeah don't be afraid to use that word the giver of the gift is perfect jesus gives the, the holy spirit is giving the gift he's perfect you and i are imperfect and so we add things to it so we better be careful now how and when you deliver the message is in your control remember that verse first corinthians 14 32 read that very powerful verse and the spirits of the prophets are subjects to the prophets. Yeah. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. That means what? I am in subject to how and when I deliver the message. There are, see, number one, I don't have to scream and shout to give a prophetic word. I don't have to say hallelujah 50 times to give a prophetic word. I don't have to say Jay Masiki, praise the Lord, all of that to give a prophetic word. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. When I'm when we are worshiping the Lord, I don't have to scream and shout. Yes, there are times though, you know, we are filled with the power of, but we don't have to do that. We're subject to the prophet. Right. So there are times of, you know, you, you may go up on the stage to preach. And at that moment, God may give a prophetic word in your mind to somebody in the congregation. That's happened many times. Now, for the benefit of the entire church, I don't go and start telling you do this, you know, preaching on the stage about that person. What I would do is I'll finish preaching my whole sermon. During ministry time, I'll call out the prophetic word which I got before coming in the morning or after the church is over i'll say i want to meet with you can you come i want to talk to you and i'm giving the prophetic word so if it's again when you give it so if it's something very personal i will not give it in front of everyone if it's something that is beneficial for everyone i may release the prophetic word you get what i'm saying right if it's something very personal I would prefer to go and talk to that person personally. But just because I'm, a, I'm prophesying doesn't mean I take advantage of the situation. Remember, he's a person. That person has feelings. He may feel ashamed. He may feel disgraced. Uh, he may feel discouraged. He may feel embarrassed. Imagine I go in, on the stage and say, God is saying this person with the name is you know, uh, taking bribes. Now, it'd be so embarrassing to that person. But I can, even after the service, I can say, hey, can you meet me? I want to talk to you. So I'm giving a prophetic word. I'm, I'm talking, I'm sharing with him on a personal note. How and when you deliver the message is in your control. Next one. There are different aspects that we must understand when giving a revelation, uh, giving and receiving a prophecy. Let's look at those different aspects. Number one is revelation. What is the literal content? Now you're giving a prophetic word. What is the content? What are you saying? Okay, example. Vinay, I'm praying for Vinay. I say, the content is God wants to use you as a pastor. 
That's the main content. Next one. Presentation. How the message is delivered. Again, how do I deliver it? Say, Vinay, here's what I sense in my spirit, and I feel this is what the Lord is leading me to. Do you feel you want to start a church? Vinay may say, oh, no, I thought about it. I'm more of a worship leader, but I have to think about it. Not too sure. That's it, right? Now, you don't have to worry, oh, you don't want to be pastor. Or, Why? You don't have to do all of that. Right? He said what he's feeling right now. So what am I doing? I'm just presenting the message. Okay. Then interpretation and understanding. What the message means to the recipient. So I'm asking Vinay, Vinay, so like, like I know that you're leading worship now, but do you feel that sometime God is calling you to that role of the pastor? He says, yeah, I, I don't mind starting a church, but I haven't really thought of it. I need some time to think of it. So you're not saying no. no I'm not saying no, but I just need time. I need to understand some more. So, so I, I, I get the message from Vinay that he wants to serve. He's serving as a worship leader, but he's not yet ready to lead a local church. But he's still open to it. So that's what he's feeling. Then application, what course of action is required? So now I can say, so Vinay, what you do is, since you're unsure, take time. Pray about it. You pray and ask God if this is something that you're leading me to do. And if it is something that God is leading you to do, you pray and ask God where, when, how, all of that. Remember, we prophesy in part. We know in part, we prophesy in part. Now, I'm not going to go and tell Vinay, Vinay, God has called you to start a church. Go to your hometown, right next to your house, take the first right, take the next left. You'll find an empty land. Now, all of that is too much. You go tell the owner that you want to buy the land. I wonder that may be possible, but I'm not giving the details. I just know, I prophesy in part. Right? Timing. When must the action be taken? Remember this. God is not in a hurry. Everyone say that. God gave Abraham the covenant that you will be a father to many nations. He was 75 years old. How many years he waited? How many? 25. God told uh, David, you will be the king of Israel. How many years he waited? About 14 years. God told Paul, you will be a light to the Gentiles. You will start. A, you'll do a great ministry. How many years he waited? God is not in a hurry, right? Prepare yourself for the call that God has given you. Do the, do the work. Do the background work. Then expect God to uh, you know, reveal to you at the right time. Next one, confirmation. This is very important. When the prophecy has correction, direction, and prediction elements in it, confirm it with God's word. So for example, you get a prophetic word, and there has correction and a certain direction. God is telling, so for example, I'll tell Vinay, Vinay, God wants you to go to uh, Bellari and start, Bellari is another city, or go to North India, Gujarat, and start a church there. Now, confirm it. If Vinay says, okay, pastor, I'll do that. Next week, he goes, buys a ticket and goes to Gujarat and sits. Gone for me. He's going to call me back after two weeks and said, I said, I want to talk to you. Firstly, you said Gujarat. Huh? I've come here. First week, I got beaten up. Second week, they want to put me into prison. Thirdly, I don't know the language. Fourthly, I don't have a house. So come back from there. Oh, so I've given the prophetic word. His responsibility is to test it. And we say, okay, God, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll pray about it. So he spent one year here in Bangladesh. Two years is over. Suddenly God puts in his heart, go, you're ready. And then he comes to me after two years of the prophetic word and says, Pastor, I'm going to Gujarat. Say, go ahead. Now this two years, what's happened? He's prepared himself. He's prepared his heart, his mind. God has prepared him as well. 
and he knows exactly what to do when he gets there. Right? So don't be in a hurry. Understand the higher value of wisdom over revelation. Because wisdom, because without wisdom, revelation can be misused. Think of this. There's a difference between wisdom and revelation. Do we need revelation? We need great revelation from God. But wisdom is greater than revelation. Because if I have great revelation and no wisdom, I may misuse what I'm doing. I may not understand what God is doing. Right? So different ways the Holy Spirit communicates with us. We spoke about this. In a still small inner witness and in impression, you can impress something in our spirit. Say, do this. And that is why most of you are sitting here. He impressed something in your heart. A flash of information in your spirit. He can give you a full information, like a two-minute video in your spirit. You can see it, right? Thirdly, uh, a, a knowing insight. I go, Vinay comes after two years and says, I'm going to Gujarat. So how do you know? God spoke to you. Yeah, firstly, you gave me a prophetic word. Secondly, I was praying and praying. Did you get a dream? No. Did you get a, another word? No. Did you get a, a prophetic word, another prophetic word? No. Are your parents forcing you? No. How do you know? I know I have to go. That is the Holy Spirit, a knowing within. Then pictures. Of course, a very common way that the Holy Spirit ministers to all of us is through pictures. A word, a sentence, and then physical sensations. So. Don't miss the supernatural while, ex while looking for the spectacular. Very important. Don't miss the supernatural work of God just because we want to release it in a spectacular way. There are times God will release, you know, there will be some spectacular things that God does. Sometimes God just wants to do it simple. You know, there's... Um, you know, when I went to uh, many years back, we went to, I think it was Indoor. We were in Indoor and we were at a conference, and this mother came crying with a baby. The baby was dead, maybe about one year old, or eight, somewhere there, right? Small baby. She kept crying and ran and came. Now, I am preaching there. And the pastor was uh, translating. And the pastor said, what happened? Why are you disturbing the meeting? Baby's not breathing. OK, don't worry. Now, I'm the preacher there. I was talking full faith and all of those things. This pastor takes the baby. Say, Ajav, Ajav. He called some two, three guys. They came. They prayed. Baby started breathing. Gave the baby to the mother and said, Pastor, continue. OK, I thought to myself, what, what happened just now? The baby was, I saw the baby in my own eyes. She was, he was not breathing. He was bluish. His thigh was blue. Sometimes we want to do the spectacular. We're waiting for the spectacular. This pastor didn't take and say, OK, open your videos. Open your camera. Now we're going to pray. Nothing he did. Simple pastor, simple man, right? No, no, you're lifting up that baby in the air and doing all this, nothing. He just held the baby, prayed, supernatural baby that was dead, came back to life, gave it back to the mother, continued with what God was doing. I told him, you preach, I'll translate. You see what happens? Sometimes you're looking for the supernatural, Sorry, the 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 you know the magnificent. You forget what God can do in the simple, right? Don't miss the supernatural while looking for the spectacular. Okay, discern if the Holy Spirit is speaking. If He is not, keep quiet. In the supernatural hour, if the Lord is not keep not speaking to us, it is okay. Just because the mic is open, don't come and say whatever you want to say. Learn to zip up. Learn to keep quiet. At times, we don't have to talk. 
if the holy spirit is not talking it's all right now that doesn't mean you sit back and say okay he is not talking and every time you know no 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 we need to stir the gift but don't make up things right our greatest hindrance in moving in the prophecy is our emotions our opinions and reasonings our emotions what will happen if i say this what will people think what will my classmates think your classmates will forget you this friends forever business is never there even 6 months they will not they have your phone number i'm telling you it's over after 6 after you all graduate after 6 months you won't have each other's phone number if you have it it's this there that's it now don't worry about what your friends think don't worry about what your roommate thinks if you are waking up early in the morning and praying don't be praying and looking this fellow will wake up any time don't worry about all of that if they are making fun of you of ridiculing you that is okay they are not going to reward you for anything move on in life grow up be mature right so re remove that hindrance of what people's opinions are are reasoning forget about all of that just sometimes the holy spirit when he ministers there's no reasoning he may minister in his own way for no reason he has it he is going to do it right and finally the gifts and ministry or the office come from god but however we can train them we can mature them and perfect them to greater accuracy the gift of prophecy is from god we train ourselves we mature ourselves we learn how to minister in the prophecy in the prophetic right next year you'll have understanding the prophetic so you learn even more in detail but the more we learn we learn from our mistakes we we stir up that gift the more accurate we begin to become in this gift right uh we almost done no this quite a lot okay we'll stop here we'll pick up from uh, how do we do this from next class and then uh, probably need another two two sessions and then we'll be able to complete our portions right all right any questions just make a mark there we stopped at uh, page 29 how do we do this right any questions yes vinay uh first of all you are maintaining your uh, daily devotion and you know you have uh, set time and uh, you know um, sometimes you feel it like you feel you you are fully into it you are feeling it and doing it sometimes you don't feel it but you are still doing it you are just pushing through yeah. that uh, sleep or yeah. that drowsiness whatever you feel it so like Uh, when you're not feeling it, uh, you have so many negative thoughts. Yeah. Uh, like, am I? Like, is it worth it? Like, I am not feeling it, but I, is God judging me for this and all that? Like, uh, so even though if you're not feeling it, is it is it okay to push ourselves and just do it? Yeah. So I would say yes, right? Because. see god understands that we are people with different emotions right so for example uh this morning when i woke up i didn't feel like praying i was very feeling very drowsy like a weird kind of feeling It happens right i didn't feel like praying but i thought okay let's just push through so what i did was i did things that i li that i like to do so normally i would get up start praying in tongues for a long time But today what i did was i played a song right i played a song and i kept praying in tongues and the song is going on right a worship song is going on uh so when you feel that you're not able to it it's good to push yourself because you know that you're spending time in god's presence and sometimes in those weakest moments or those moments of weariness when you push through is when god really ministers something to you but he can really minister a word to you something that you've been asking god for but even if he doesn't it's all right 
But what I'm doing is I'm training myself. I'm disciplining myself. Think of this, Daniel. Three times a day, he prayed looking towards heaven. Do you think all the times he was the same feeling? They wanted to throw him in the lion's den. He came back, opened the windows, and he prayed as usual. But I'm sure he would have thought, I'm going to be put in the lion's den. But somehow he may have pushed himself. So there are times we go through that. We have to discipline. That's the discipline that we have. Sometimes we don't want to get up and go to the gym. But we still do it. Why? Because it's a discipline. We know it's good for us, even if we don't feel like. So the same way, I know it's good for me to spend time in God's presence, even when I don't feel it. So it disciplines you. Just a follow up question, Pastor. Is it OK to uh, set time? Like, uh, OK, what I have to ask. I want to spend time uh, for two hours. Yeah. So I divide the time, and I keep a stopwatch. Yeah. So for 20 minutes, I read Bible. 20 minutes, I read some spiritual book. For 20 minutes, I pray uh, in tongues. And 20 minutes, I pray in understanding yeah. for the prayer request. Yeah. So is it OK to do Yes, that? perfectly all right. Perfectly all right. No problem at all. Yeah, you can do it your way. Yeah. Say it on the mic. Pastor, if five days we are going according to the timetable, that okay, 20 minutes prayer. 10 minutes uh, praying in tongue and 10 minutes normal prayer, 10 minutes worship. But sometimes when we are exhausted and feeling so low, feeling sleepy, and and we just thought that, OK, I, today I'll just worship and just pray. So is that also? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. As long as you're spending time in his presence, that's fine. It's, it's all right. All right. OK. Uh, one small question. Like if I get the prophetic word and a, not image, but a thing uh, for a certain people. So do I have to ask first, OK, are you are you looking for this, this thing? Yeah. Are you looking or are you planning to do this? Do we have to ask? And it's if, good to ask. If, if we ask, so doesn't it mean that we are mm, like doubting our prophetic word? No, we are, so what we are doing is we are releasing the prophetic word in the right manner, right? So by me asking, Vinay, are you ready to start a church? This is what God wants you to do. Imagine I say, God wants you to start a church. He says, no, I'm not interested. But the way I put it across is I feel that God is saying that, you know, you, I want you, God wants you to start a church. Vinay, what do you think about this? Now I'm giving him the option. I'm not forcing myself on him. Now, remember, the Holy Spirit is a dove. So he's he's gentle. He's not going to force us. So I'm giving the prophetic word. Vinay is, is thinking about it. The moment I say, God wants you to be a pastor, this is what you're going to do, he may say, no, I don't want to do that. I want to start my own business. But I can say, hey, is this something that you want to do? Is it? Uh, uh, do you want to be a pastor? He may say, I'm not thought of it, but I also want to do a, I want to start my own business. Right? He may have some business, music business. I want to start a music business. So then what's happening is I'm opening my, his thoughts. He, the Holy Spirit is revealing what is happening in his life. So the way I'm ministering the gift is not in doubt, but I'm being wise on how I'm ministering the gift. Right. OK, so we'll pick up from next class. Have a good week. Then. Sorry, uh, Pooja, I think we'll close. If it's OK, we'll uh, just pick up the questions from next class, please. Let's make a note of the questions. Sorry, we the students have to leave now. So no problem, we'll pick up your question next class. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.